it's a good day to drop some diamonds in. I think that's what I'm going to do today. Try to help somebody. So the topic I want to deal with is discipline leads to deliverance. Um, You know, this something that came to me during my prayer time with God. And I think it's a pretty good strategy and a way to think about things. Because I know as people, like, one thing about it for sure, we like to see the final results. We want everything to be, you know, done and over with. We're ready to be our best, like, right now. That we don't think about discipline. We don't think about the process, the patience that we're going to have to have, you know, along this journey. We just want it to be done and over with. And a lot of times, you know, what God has shown me is that sometimes, like, when you finally say that you want to live for Christ, right, and you're like, okay, I'm done with the world. The world can't offer offer me anything. I'm tired of the same old life. I'm tired of being stuck in the same old dark place. And the one thing God showed me about us as people is we like to do this right here. What we like to do as people is we like to bite off more than we can chew. Y'all know we do that. And let's just say you win your Bible real strong one week, you know, you're listening to gospel music and you like staying away from different things. You're trying to network with other people that's in Christ. You probably even going to church. You're going to Bible study. You're doing all of that. You're doing your prayer. And so you're going strong a week, maybe two weeks, three weeks, maybe a month, maybe two months. Then all of a sudden you see yourself having a setback. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and when you had that setback, it's, it's fast. And all of a sudden, you know, you back to where you started and you feeling disappointed in yourself. You know what I'm saying? So God showed me that we don't have to try to be in a rush to be so, you know, be delivered so fast and come clean. Because you got to think about it. I treat it like I keep it simple. It's like a diet. You want to cut back on fast foods and all of this or you trying to work out. It's really just one day at a time. And a lot of times we're trying to cram everything in, you know. So think about it. If you're trying to cram everything in, you're trying to learn so much about the Bible, so much about God. You're trying to learn so much about your spiritual gifts. And, you know, how do you have time to really learn anything if you're trying to cram everything in at once? It's like when you're taking a test, you're trying to hurry up and study. Like, my question to you, why are you in the rush? You know what I'm saying? Like, we want our story to be, oh, I used to do this over here, but I'm delivered now. You know, focus more on the discipline part so that you don't, you know, backslide. Because here's here's one thing I'm going to tell you. If you truly, in order to truly be delivered and to move away from something, you have to hate it first. If you still like what you do or still like this sin, it's going to be hard to be delivered from something that you still like. You see what I'm saying? That's why I say it's never really about rushing. It's about going through the process with God, learning about God, you and God building that relationship so he can show you about this world and sin. And and the reason why I'm saying this is because you're going to learn a lot about yourself on this journey. That's why I'm saying, like, what are you rushing for? Because here's the thing, man, like when you're walking out of sin and you or you coming out of sin, it's almost just like like I said before, go back into to that diet. It's hard. You, you, the things that you used to do all the time. You know what I'm saying? This has become a lifestyle. This has this is your life, not even habits. It's like your life now. It takes time to break away from these things. And you're trying to break away within a few weeks, months, or maybe a year. It's going to take time because there is so much God has to undo within your mindset first. You know what I'm saying? God changes the way you see things. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. You, you see what I'm saying? So this is why I'm saying like uh, hold on to the discipline. Because once God, once you're set free, God will make a way, you know, escape from temptation. You got to be able to endure and stand against it. And the reason why having discipline is so good, because like I say, temptation going to stay. Temptation ain't going to go nowhere. Temptation will stay the same. The only thing that's going to change is you. And that's why I say that discipline, like, and I'm going to just give y'all an example. Like, I, whenever I have a sweet tooth, I like Reese's Cups, white chocolate Reese's Cups. And to the point where I used to couldn't go down the aisle to see it. Like, because if I see it, then I'm going to want to get grab me a few packs and put them in the buggy. So what I used to do was that discipline kick in. I just say, well, I'm going I'm to go this way. I'm going to go the other way. So like they say, God, guard your eye gate because the things that we see in here, it enters, you know, to the soul. It'll say, they got on Reese's right there. So I'll go the other way. And to the point where I kept doing it for so long and just that discipline and, you know, fighting against that urge to the point where now if I walk right by it, I don't even notice it no more. And that's just an example, you know, just using that, so to speak. So to the point, I don't even notice it. It doesn't, 
And that's why I say, you know, it's all about that discipline. You have to work up that that spiritual strength. You know what I'm saying? Like I said in another video, we work on our physical muscle that we're we're weak internally. You see what I'm saying? We don't know how to walk away from temptation. This is why you see people always end up cheating on somebody because your flesh is so weak to just anything that make it feel good. You see what I'm saying? You have to gain that discipline over yourself. You got to you got to have a grip on you. Because if you don't, you're going to end up in places with people that you should, you know what I'm saying, things you shouldn't have never been in. You see what I'm saying? And that's why I say you don't have to bite off more than you can chew. Chew, discipline will lead to that deliverance. It's all it's all in the discipline first. Like I said, with going, it's just like going on a diet. That's how I treated sin, going on a diet. And then once, it, and like I say, and it's impossible to be with God every day and don't change. Like, seriously, it's impossible. And when I say that, I don't mean like pray here and there, church here and there, listen to a sermon here and there. I mean, like, no, like going strong, like like how you started working out strong, like you going to the gym every day, being active. That's how it is with God, being active to the point like your ways are starting to become like God. Like if you, you like have you have a friend that you ever hung out with so long that y'all start to act like each other. That's how it is with God. That's how it was with me. When I started being around God every day, standing his word, stand before his stand before him, seeking him and him, you know, he mature me and I'm growing and I'm learning about a lot of things spiritually. The way that God started to, you know, to see, that's how I started to see the way that God see. That's how I started seeing, excuse me. Um, my ways become like Christ. You know what I'm saying? My mindset become like Christ. It's like Christ like. You know what I mean? So that's why I say it's impossible not to change. If you're not changing, it's because you're, you're only tapping in here and there. Just like the gym, you only come in here and there and no no results. And this is something funny to think about. But just think about how, you know, when we go to the gym and start working out, and then you start lifting a few weights, and then you already looking in the mirror like something done changed. You know, ain't that changed about just because you lift some weights about two minutes. That's how it be with God. Like, when we you know, get saved and we be reading our Bible and we think that something done changed that fast. Mm -mm. I, now nah, I can't speak for everybody, but majority and how it works is it takes time. It's like detoxing. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't, don't like the goal is not to be super saved so fast. And that's how people be like, we want, we want to finish in results. We want to, we want to be solid fast. Like I'm super safe. I'm, Oh, I'm good on that. <sighs> Discipline. And that's what I say, discipline. Like I said, temptation always going to be here. That discipline. Discipline is where it's at. And then that growth, that, that relationship with God where you're learning about things. You know what I'm saying? You're maturing in life. So, and I'm going to show you something too. Like, along this journey with God, and like I said, it's about detoxing. You know, coming away from the old ways into a whole new life, a, a mindset, a new environment spiritually. It got easier along this journey because when you're in God's presence, he starts to renew your mind. Like I say, a cleansing. If you stay long enough in God's presence, I mean, stay there. I don't mean get up and walk away. I mean, stay. He'll start renewing the mind, cleansing. It's like when Jesus, you know, healed the blind man and he go, what do you see now? And when God started to heal me in my vision he was showing me the world. So when I, when God started to cleanse the way I, you know, see things, he said, what do you see? And I say, a bunch of sinful people and the things that we're doing, you know what I'm saying? It's out of order. And I, and, I, and this is just <clears throat> my story. And it's true for me. Like ain't nothing I'm making up. Like I say, I'm well over 30. Like, when I was a kid, I wouldn't think about, you know, being with Christ and talking about the Bible and trying to, you know, help other people get saved. I was thinking about doing my own thing. So that's why I say everything I be telling you about is true. And it come from my own personal experience. But when I started, when God, I was detoxing from the world and God, say, you know, changed my vision. What do you see now? He's healing my vision. And I'm like, we nasty. This is a nasty, contaminated world. And it, it, don't, it not just just everything, the attitudes, how we treat each other, the violence. We got these predators, you know, trying to fool, you know, mess with these kids, people messing with these animals. I mean, this stuff been happening since Bible days, but you don't know that it's happening. You don't know how sick it is until God cleanses you. And he said, like, what do you see now? It's sick. 
the mindset of this world is that you, not everybody, but just speaking in general, that you don't know how to meet a new person without laying down with them. Why is everybody having access to your body? Why do I get on the internet and seeing people's, <clears throat> you know, private areas? Like, that's not nothing I'm supposed to see. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm saying. And like, I even had to get out, log off my Twitter because I have a business page on there and I like to network with my brand. But I had to even get off of there because they're allowing this site to be like a, a you know, a, a porn site. Like casually, you just trying to, you know, tweet out your post and, you know, do business and you casually got to pass by people getting it on. <laughs> and that's why I say the mindset, the world is sick. Stuff you do in private, now you do for the world. You know, and so, and then it doesn't help when we live in a world where the mentality is, oh, well, you know, get it how you live. And a lot of times while we out, and I'm just going to be, I'm going to put it out there and be honest. The reason why we say we don't like to judge, you know, do what you do won't, it's because, the, the, like, because we, we be knowing we be doing stuff too. But it's like, once you have really detoxed from the world, you realize that ain't a good mindset to have either. Like, you know, get it how you live. I ain't judging this. I ain't judging that. You know, people don't want to judge because they, like I said, they doing stuff in private too. Or, you know, we, we don't care unless it's something that really affects us. You know what I'm saying? Just like right now, you know, with them trying to make this minor attracting people, that organization, a thing. See, we care about that, but it's like, baby, once you let CNN, it's in here. You don't get to pick and choose now. You done opened up the door, the vault of the beast. So he heal in different ways. You don't get to pick and choose. This is why God say repent. And this is why you got to be careful what you let in, man. Because it's like I say, I don't judge, you know. And just like me, when I say I don't judge nobody, it's basically I can't place you in the heaven or hell. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to bad mouth you, you know, to your face on the internet, nothing like that. But I, I do have... A perception of it you know what i'm saying but it's just how i choose to go about it you're not helping nobody when you are you know trying to beat them down make them look bad but i do care about what people do because eventually it's gonna affect me and mine you know what i'm saying so get it how you live you say that until somebody trying to get you <laughs> you see what i'm saying so it's like don't give it a pass because you don't know what they trying to get Get it how you live. You don't know what they're trying to get. Don't give it a pass unless you know what it is. But see, now we see what it is. You know, one minute, you you know, we don't judge this, we don't judge that. So you don't you don't never know the mindset of other people. They say, oh, well, they don't judge. Well, I might as well show who I am. And right now, that's what we're getting. People coming on out. Saying, you know, this is what I'm about to be doing. This is what I like. I want your kids. I want your husband. I want your wife. <laughs> you let the beast in. And that's why I say, you know, in, in 1 Corinthians, you know, this is one of my favorite, you know, scriptures or verses is talking about running away from sexual sin. Because what people don't understand is that sexual sin is what opens the door to a lot of things. This lusting, this lusting spirit that we have out here. And we know that lust is at its all time high. The flesh is so weak. Like so many people are so weak in the flesh that, you know, lust has taken over. You know what I'm saying? And this is, you know, and nothing does the body harm like sexual sin. Even when it come down to soul ties. That's why I'm talking to y'all about discipline. Because this stuff going to get stronger. These demons, these spirits going to get stronger. They lusting. You got these teachers sleeping with these kids. Come on now. And, you know, and, it, and it's just, a, this is a thought. But this is what happens when you try to be a likable person when you try to be that person that you know person that is neutral in everything you know i ain't got nothing to do with other people do they do this and do that you know that's true you don't just go around and walking up to people trying to tell them how to you know live their life but when you come across somebody you know what i'm saying and it's person you know personal between y'all you know y'all two you know what i'm saying it's all right to talk to somebody and lead them back on the right tra track you know what i'm saying on the right path that's what God wants us to do. He say, you know, to do it in love, though. So it's recommended. Because how am I going to help you if I'm always saying, hey, it is what it is. Do you. I don't judge. How I'm helping you. It's, it's how I choose to help you. You know what I'm saying? It's how a person chooses to help you. So, you know, before I come and close this message, I want to say a few things that 
on my journey, what made it easier for me to walk away from sin, or the, I'm going to just say the world, and doing my own thing and living in my flesh, is my love for God. And we always say, when you love somebody, you do right by them. And that's what it really was for me. I love God. I really do. And it made it easier. And that's why I say, stop trying to rush the process. And, you know, just work on the discipline. And let, and, in, and in that moment, God is still molding and shaping you. He's teaching you a lot of things. You're growing up. You know what I'm saying? You're putting away your childish behavior, like the word of God says. And as you're doing that, and you and God are becoming best friends. You know, he's your number one friend. It's easier to choose him than to choose the world because the world has already forsaked you anyway. Right? And so here's the key point. After you experience the world, God allow us to experience the world. He allow us to experience these people and situations. And when it was all said and done, I experienced these people, these situations, these jobs, whatever it was. They all left. They all left me in a place of like shambles. But God was always there. He was always there to, to fix the broken pieces. He was always there to restore, renew. You know what I'm saying? Things in my life. It made it better. So it's like that gave me an opportunity to finally see God. See, going through the wilderness, it highlights God, how much he's really there in our life. That's why people got to fall away. That's why people got to hurt you. He has to allow them to do what they want to do so that you can see who's really for you. And that is God. So that's what makes it easier. You know what I'm saying? Along this journey. So on a spiritual level, you are now in the gym. You're now getting ready to work out. It's like doing reps. You know, you ain't got to try to do, you know, 30 reps in one day. Just three or six then you know just at a time just pull up you know what I'm saying that's how it is with discipline and you know removing yourself from the temptation and a lot of times you know just choosing wisely if you know this is gonna cause you to stumble go ahead and move around go ahead and move around that so because like I say you in a spiritual gym right now take your time go every day you know what I'm saying like I say seeking God his face and as long as you stay in God's presence, you know, and working out, you're going to get stronger and it's going to get easier. And then you're going to go help other people and lead them out. And that's what I'm doing. I started, I became mighty in the spirit. And now I'm coming back to get some other people and show them how to do it.